The flamboyant cuttlefish is a rather strange little creature. It is only one of three cephalopods found to be toxic, making it undesirable to both predators and humans alike. With laterally flattened arms and one of the smallest cuttle bones of the cuttlefish, it literally walks along the bottom of the ocean shore. Its small cuttle bone causes it to have limited buoyancy, making walking its preferred method of travel. Unlike many other cuttlefish, instead of fleeing when encountered, the flamboyant cuttlefish will stand its ground and put on an elaborate display of color for its enemies. There are four basic colors the cuttlefish has in its arsenal of skin pigments. There is red, yellow, brown, and black pigmented chromatophores. The yellow chromatophore is the closest to the surface of the skin, while red and orange are below the yellow, and brown or black is just above the erratophore layer. Erratophores are plates of proton or chitin, which are able to reflect the environment around the cuttlefish. They are responsible for the metallic blues, greens, golds, and silver that the cuttlefish often make. The flamboyant cuttlefish is often found off the western coast of Australia, near Queensland, but less commonly found in the Malaysian Islands as well as the Philippines. They are most active during the day in the shallows, actively hunting their prey, which in this case is this bystanding shrimp. It uses its long feeding tentacles much like a squid to rapidly capture its prey. The feeding tentacles quickly bring the food to the crushing beak of the cuttlefish, which, like any cephalopod, is the only hard part of the mollusk's body, along with its cuttle bone. The flamboyant cuttlefish will also oftentimes use its complex display of colors to disorient or attract prey. Their diet is mainly comprised of crab, small mollusks, and octopus. flamboyant cuttlefish experiences much sexual dimorphism, with the male only being half the size of the female. Despite this intimidating size difference, once the male has entered the territory of the female, he will begin courtship in order to be allowed to pass on his sperm packet. The male has a suckerless arm on his left ventral side called the hectocotylus, which is where this prized sperm packet resides. Copulation occurs face to face, with the male inserting a packet of sperm into a a pouch on the underside of the female's mantle. The female then selectively fertilizes her eggs, with one batch eggs sometimes being fertilized by multiple males. The eggs are laid singly and placed by the female in crevices or ledges in coral, rock, or wood, or in this case under a coconut shell. These cuttlefish are often terminal breeders, and once the female has laid her eggs, she will then die. As the eggs incubate, you can begin to see many adult versions of the flamboyant cuttlefish appear. The eggs incubate for a various period of time depending on the water temperature surrounding them. With a lifespan of only about a year, these cuttlefish need as much of a jump start as they can get in life. Upon hatching, the newly born cuttlefish have all the same functionalities as adults, except that they will consume mainly mycids and smaller prey in comparison to the adults. There is relatively little known about the flamboyant cuttlefish. They are a rarity in comparison to many other species of cuttlefish, and thus are not as commonly studied. So what value might they still hold, despite very little studies having been done on them? Unfortunately, their tissues are believed to be very toxic. Some say as toxic as the blue-ringed octopus, making them very undesirable for a fisheries industry. In contrary, they do still contain a cuttle bone like any other cuttlefish. This cuttle bone is a derivative of what once used to be an external shell and is made of calcium carbonate. Many indoor birds tend to have a calcium deficiency and are often fed cuttle bones as a mineral supplement as well as to welt their beaks. The same is done for reptiles as a mineral supplement, but in a ground up version. Aquarium survival is still relatively low for these cuttlefish and they are only still being found in very small numbers. But once a solid foundation of captive breeding has been established, there is a future for private aquarium collections for the flamboyant cuttlefish. Due to its mesmerizing color displays, there is a great potential for the species in the world of private aquariums, but until the then, the world will continue to travel to the areas of the Indo-Pacific Ocean to look in awe at these truly unique creatures from the shallows.